Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Public Cloud for VMware Users 104 Public Cloud Offerings. So continuing this theme of uh, compute and services, we're going to talk about the various compute and services that you can get from the three major public cloud providers. So that's Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform and Microsoft Azure. And then towards the end, we're going to have a quick look at uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, but we will cover VMware Cloud Foundation in more detail in a subsequent video. So we'll just do a quick recap of what we discussed at the end of the last video. Uh, we talked about the fact that VMs, as a bare minimum, would run on a um, server with a hypervisor, that containers, as a bare minimum, require a container runtime, and that functions as a bare minimum require a serverless environment or a serverless platform. But let's just have a kind of a more discussion around those kinds of things. So we've got three different ways that our, that um, organizations could deploy applications. So why would somebody pick one over the other? So again, it's more of a discussion point rather than facts. Uh, but I would say if you're, if you're more inclined to be deploying traditional applications, you're more inclined to be on the left-hand side of that, doing virtual machines. If your focus is on things like agile development, you're probably going to be looking in the middle there on containers and container runtimes, uh, things like Docker and Kubernetes. And if your drive is, is towards cloud functions, you're going to be doing uh, writing pure functions in a serverless environment. Um, another way to look at that would be that as you move to the left hand side of the scale it's more about an IT department managing servers and on the right hand side it's more about developers managing code and I guess even another way to think of that is that the further you get to the left um, you might call it server full and as you get over to the right it's serverless so um, again you know not the greatest naming convention ever but um, that's what the industry's come to call these various different things so you know a platform is pretty much either server full or serverless or somewhere in the middle so again I'm, I'm not touting these as pure facts just a discussion point next one again is about really why people are running the different kinds of things um, so I would say that the majority of organizations today are paying the bills and generating an income by running things like virtual machines. Now maybe if you're Google running Gmail or your Netflix running a streaming service you might not be here but I think the majority of organizations in the world are running traditional applications on virtual machines. I think the ambition is that long term most organizations would like to be living in a world where it's containers and functions and it's all cloud computing and I wouldn't disagree with that either uh, but what I would say is that if people focus too much on the virtual machines and the stuff that we're running today they run the risk of not taking advantage of cloud but also if people uh, think it's possible to jump straight to containers and functions um, without any kind of difficulties or transition problems or migrations again that's probably the not not the right place to look I would say that if you're an IT manager, a CIO or a CTO, your focus at the moment should probably probably be about moving from VMs and containers um, on a single platform so that the business stays in, you know, the business can stay in business long enough to get to the long term future. So just to kind of kind of summarize that, I think that the, the trick or the key now is to maintain your existing virtual machine environment whilst embracing containers and being able to run those two things on the same environment, um, on the same platform, with the same staff, the same tools and the same monitoring and management and infrastructure and operations with a view that eventually the virtual machines may disappear over time as you take on uh, more containers and more functions so again as, as I said I think if you know my top tip would be the key to this is finding a way to run virtual machines and containers so you can stay in business long enough to get to the future because for most organizations it's the virtual machines and the traditional applications that are keeping the business alive and paying the bills so another thought on here which is you know if you take a traditional on-premise environment which many people consider to be quite complex when you look at all the different moving parts in that um, if you look at how complex or not that environment is now when organizations take on another public cloud 
that could get even more complex. And if you look at those things there, there's lots of duplication of um, compute engines and hypervisors and storage technologies and network technologies. Probably the biggest one for me, though, is the security. Multiple places where you do firewall rules and access control and user management. Um, and as that happens, it may be that you take on another cloud provider. It's quite common that people get free credits for public clouds and people want to use the free credits. And that trial suddenly now becomes production. Um, it's not uncommon for people to find some cheap online storage and maybe look at somewhere else to store you know, other data or other backups. It might be that somebody finds a really cool uh, development platform or container platform and starts using that. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is this can quickly get out of hand and there could be lots of different points to manage. It's bad having lots of points that you know about, uh, but it's even worse having ones that you don't know about. And it might be that if you can't keep up with the speed of the developers, that the developers find a way around. Developers are quite resilient in that. They're like water that you know they'll find a path around or they'll find a way around if they don't get what they want. So it may be that if you can't give a developer a big machine and create a firewall rule for them in in a in a timely fashion, it might be that they just go and build a big machine somewhere else outside of the firewall and don't put that firewall rule on. Um, because developers care about code and deploying code, not infrastructure. And for many developers, traditional IT just isn't fast enough for them. Um, you may also find that even though that looks complex, you might find that without your knowledge, you've actually got more than one cloud provider that you didn't even know about, that other teams and other departments have already started using something that many people call shadow IT. So I guess what we're saying is if you feel like your environment is complex now, it could just get a whole lot worse unless you have um, a cloud strategy, a clearly defined strategy that you define now, because otherwise people might do it for you. So again, just to, uh, I'll get off my soapbox now, but just a view as to how things might go for organizations that don't take the time to define a robust cloud strategy now. So let's move to what different services the public cloud providers actually have or actually deliver so if i was to build a amazon flavored vm so a, a vm that's designed to work in the amazon cloud that would sit on something called ec2 that's the elastic compute cloud um, e for elastic c2 for the computing cloud almost like the scientific notation they're like h2o um, they use that notation ec2 so that's a uh, specifically a VM designed to run on Amazon Web Services. That's why it's the Amazon color. What we've got here is a container. Now, the reason that this is not colored or not flavored or not a platform specific is that done properly, containers should be able to run on any platform unless you really kind of, you know, go out of your way. Uh, most containers should run anywhere. And, and that's one of the great things about them, that they are not platform specific. So these containers don't have a color because they're not specific to a particular platform. And if you're going to run a container on Amazon Web Services, the chances are you're going to run it on ECS, the Elastic Container Service. The next step on from that would be functions and these are amazon flavored or amazon specific functions uh, amazon were one of the first people in the market to be doing this at scale and their serverless uh, environment for running functions is called lambda it's probably the best known of all the serverless or function as a service offerings so that's how you do those things on amazon aws if we to do the same thing on google platform um, a Google flavored machine or a Google specific machine would run on something called GCE, Google Compute Engine. So that's the version of a virtual machine environment. Again, containers don't have any particular color or flavor because done properly, a container should be able to run anywhere, regardless of the platform underneath. It should be platform agnostic. Um, Google's specific um, a container platform is called GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine. Again, one of the probably the, the better known or the more well-known ones uh, based on the fact that Kubernetes was developed at Google uh, by a team um, of three people. Um, two of those people left to form an organization called Heptio. That would be Joe Bader and Craig McLucky. Um, so as VMware acquired Heptio, VMware now employs two of the three original founders of Kubernetes, although the project originally started inside Google itself. Um, if you want to run 
Google flavored functions or Google specific functions. There's a couple of different options here um, and no obvious standout one. It really depends what you want to do. But the options for running functions in Google, you could argue would fall into any of the three categories. It would either be cloud functions, app engine or cloud run. And again, not really um, got time to go into the detail here, but just that functions would probably be done on one of those. But there isn't an obvious first choice. If it was something like AWS, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you would go for Lambda, but Google, uh, a couple of different options there. If we now move to Microsoft Azure, if you were to run an Azure flavored or an Azure specific VM, that would run on Azure VM or Azure Virtual Machine. If you were to run a container, again a common theme here, containers done properly should not be uh, flavored or platform specific. They a, a container should be able to be deployed anywhere. Uh, Amazon's, ver sorry, Microsoft Azure's version of this is AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, Microsoft's flavor of functions or or uh, Azure specific functions would sit on either Azure Functions or their App Service. Again, not an obvious choice here. It could be either of those two things. But as you can see, um, you can run all of the things we talked about, VMs, containers, and functions, on all the different cloud providers' platforms, but there are different names and different technologies for each of those, and most of them are colored or flavored, as in they are only designed to run on that cloud provider's own specific implementation. I'm just going to show you something now. I'm not going to cover it in this video. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of it. Um, but there is a way to run VMware VMs, the things that most people already have now, the things that are paying the bills, natively on all public clouds. So it uses something called VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation. And the very quick uh, version of what that is, is it's a bundle of vSphere, vSAN, and NSX as the core components with the ability to run vRealize on that as well for the operations part. But essentially, it's a bundling of a, of a core group of VMware products, and together that bundle of products, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, vRealize, is called VCF or VMware Cloud Foundation. Now, the reason that that's important is that Amazon have a version of VCF. So this is Amazon servers running the VMware Cloud Foundation software stack. So that's Amazon servers running bare metal, so not on top of any other hypervisor. Um, vSphere is running directly on top of Amazon servers with vSAN, NSX, and vRealize as a service called VMC on AWS. So the VMware Managed Cloud on AWS. There's a similar, similar offering from Google uh, so Google also run VMware Cloud Foundation, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, vRealize uh, on top of their infrastructure and their hardware, and that is called the Google Cloud VMware Engine. And another similar service from Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft also run vCF, vSphere, vSAN, NSX, vRealize on top of Microsoft hardware, and that is called the Azure VMware Solution. So what that means is, if you've got the majority of your business running on VMware virtual machines in that file format, it now means that it's possible to run those same VMs on a Google public cloud using Google Cloud VMware Engine. So these things are now portable. They can be moved around. You can do things like a move or a migrate or a vMotion, but you now have a single platform to manage but it now spans multiple different data centers and cloud providers. And because it's the same file format and the same technology underneath, I could even move something from on-prem to a cloud provider. And I can move them around however I see fit without any re-architecting um, or, my, or you know, kind of changing or migrating or doing any kind of difficult work underneath. The VMs will run natively on multiple data centers and cloud providers. So that's a sneak peek of what's coming in a, in a future video. Um, I'll just move now to a summary of this one, which was, you know, kind of elevator pitch moment again. If somebody asks you which uh, companies are behind which cloud platforms, would you be able to tell them? So just something for your own amusement. Um, you know, just three questions. Who runs and operates GCP? Who runs and operates AWS? And who runs and operates Azure? And next time, 
we'll be talking about that thing we mentioned just before, VMware Cloud Foundation. So the next video in the series is going to be 105 Computing Resources and Services, VMware Cloud Foundation or VCF. And this is how you're able to run existing virtual machines that most organizations already have that are running the key services on multiple data centers and multiple public cloud providers without having to re-architect or uh, rework any of their existing investment. So that was video 104. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.